When I go bike packing, I usually take a tent or a tarp. But what's better, tarp or tent? In this video, I want to share with you the five main factors that influence my choice on which type of shelter to take. Coming up. The first thing that you need to decide is what's the purpose of your bikepacking trip. Is it a holiday or is it something else like a journey? So for example, if you're going for a holiday and it's on a bike, then you're gonna probably want something a little bit more substantial than a tarp. So maybe the tent option is gonna be better for you. But if you're doing some kind of like long distance journey, perhaps an Audax or a challenge, and the accommodation is secondary, then the tarp might be a more lightweight and versatile option for you. So what are the five factors that influence my choice of shelter when I go bikepacking? Well, they include location, duration, time of year or season, packability and weight, and versatility. Now we'll have a look at all five of those factors as we look at the different types of shelter. But let's start off with a quick overview of my Zephyrus One tent. This is my Zephros One. It's a one person, three season tent. I've owned it for about two years and it comes in at about 145 pounds or thereabouts. It consists of an outer fly sheet and an inner bed chamber, which are permanently attached to each other, which makes it a little bit easier when you're putting the tent up. It's a single pole hoop tent, and this is a 8.5 millimeter flexi pole made from lightweight aluminium. It comes with four guy ropes, two on each side and two smaller ones at the end. There are also two smaller little stakes on each end for just propping up the ends. The tent comes with just one zipped door, so you need to consider the orientation when setting it up. Inside the fly sheet, you have this vestibule area, which is quite useful for storing some kit. The inner bed chamber has half mesh and two smaller mesh panels at the ends at your feet and head. This is what it looks like from the inside. I'm sat up. My head is touching the apex of this inner tent, but uh, by not much, you know, I'm not pushing up onto the fly sheet. So there's still a gap between my head and the fly sheet, which is good. It's nice and long, um, six foot four, and there's actually quite a lot of length here. So if I lay down, you can see plenty of room. There's my feet just touching the end. The roof does slope down pretty quickly. There's not a lot of room at the either end, but in the middle here, it's not too bad. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit of space to my left here, which is very useful if you need to store any valuables like your wallet, torch, watch, or mobile phone. So once I'm inside, I feel pretty snug. I can undo this inner tent. I've got a little preparation area here for sorting out my kit and preparing any food. And I have prepared food in this area before with a stove, but only once the fly sheet is open. The total weight of this tent is 1.65 kilograms. That includes the inner, the outer, all the pegs and the guy ropes, and the aluminium pole. So that's not too bad, that's pretty good. The only thing to consider when uh, going bikepacking with this tent is just how small the pole actually folds up to because if it's any wider than your handlebars then you're going to have to stow that perhaps in a crossbar bag or frame bag some other location but i find on a mountain bike with a flat handlebar the length of the pole is about um, 45 to 50 centimeters uh, easily fits into a flat bar handlebar I really like this tent. I like the fact that it's got this low profile and the small footprint. I find it rugged, reliable, and it's really quite cozy once you get yourself set up in here. So there you have it, my Zephros One, one person, three seasons tent. Next up, it's my One Tigris Iron Wall, and it's a hot tent. It's actually been designed so that you can put a stove inside for added warmth. 
It has a hexagon shape, meaning that it has seven triangular panels which rise up towards the point here. So it's a kind of a teepee or pyramid shape. As you can see, it's got quite a large footprint and you can see that it's considerably bigger in profile than the Zephyros 1. The tent has nine peg-out points and five pull-out points for the guy ropes. And it comes with these strange shaped pegs, which are very strong and robust, but they're actually quite difficult to push into the ground. So you might need a, a stick or a stone or some kind of tool just to push those in. It has a couple of these vent windows with mesh underneath there and it comes also with this port or window. Now it doesn't come with the stove jack which you have to buy additionally but this is where your uh, flue or your chimney will protrude out of your tent. The tent weighs 1.9 kilograms but that includes the outer, the inner sleeping chamber, all the tent pegs and the guy ropes. You can pick up this one Tigris iron wall for around about £145 mark. It has a single D-shaped door. Let's go inside and have a look. Come inside and let's have a look. This is my stove. This is the stove location. The chimney goes up through the port here. And then this is the bed chamber area here. The tent is supported by a single aluminium pole, it goes up to the apex and it does have a tendency to push into the ground here so you might think about putting something just to stop it pushing into the earth. Now if you're going bikepacking it's very unlikely that you're going to be taking a stove with you like this. This weighs in at about six kilograms. It's a uh, a Winnerwell Nomad and it's in the small size and you can get these in medium and large. You can also get them with windows on the side so that you can see the flame and uh, that variation is called the Winnerwell View. But you can get a titanium version which weighs in at less than two kilograms. Now that could be an option for bike packing if you're going into a more remote location and you need that extra warmth. One quick observation at this point is this zip. In order to zip it all the way down to the bottom, it's quite a long push. And if this stove is on, you can get quite close and you don't want to be falling over onto a red hot stove. So I have found doing that zip up a little bit troublesome at times. Now, by virtue of the fact that this is designed to have a stove inside, you've got to have good ventilation. So the entire teepee construction is supposed to sit above the ground to allow good ventilation underneath the fly and into the living area. That gap underneath the outer fly means that this is a pretty drafty tent, but that's the whole point, I suppose, to get air inside here. So this is the bed chamber, and you get into it via two zips, one at the bottom, horizontal, one down the middle, that's the vertical, and you can roll this back. And tie it up like that. This sleeping chamber is effectively suspended from the outer fly by a number of little eyelets that it hooks into. There's eight of those around the side and then one at the top making nine. This is the bed chamber. It's fully netted all the way around for insect protection and it's great because it gives it nice light and airy feeling. To get in here you have to open two zips. There's the horizontal zip and the vertical zip but it's only on this side and I think that's to stop you trying to get out the other side towards the stove if you've got a stove going. Now the total weight of this tent is 1.9 kilos and that includes the inner and all the guy ropes and pegs. Now if I'm going to go out bike packing by myself I'm obviously not going to be taking a stove and I might not even take this inner which weighs in at about 400 grams so I could reduce the weight of this tent to 1.5 kilos which was making it a fairly good and comparable option with the Zephyros 1 but it's providing me with a lot more accommodation inside. I'll just take this bed chamber down now and let's have a quick look at it without that in situ. So this is the bed chamber, I've taken it down, it weighs about 400 grams and it's obviously got some bulk to it, although it will compress down in its compression sack. So this is what it looks like inside the tent without this. There's the gap underneath the tent 
all the way around to the door. As you can see, it's absolutely cavernous. Loads and loads of room, easily enough room for two people to get in here with all of their kit. And in a way, in this sort of configuration, it's pretty comparable to a tarp. So that's it, that's my one Tigris iron wall stove tent and uh, I really like that. So here are the two tents, as you can see, quite different in profile. One Tigris is quite high and has quite a large footprint, where the Zephros one is a little bit more stealthy and has that smaller footprint for confined areas. That's the two tents. Let's go over now and have a look at my tarp. So this is my Lomo 3 by 3 meter tarp. It's virtually identical to the DD Hammocks tarp, but it's a little bit cheaper. This is coming in at a price point of around about 26 to 28 pounds, which is very, very economical. The weight of this is about 600 to 700 grams, depending on which make you get, but that doesn't include the guy ropes, pegs, or any kind of supporting pole and in this case, I'm using an extendable walking stick in order to make this configuration, which is a tarp tent. All of that adds up to around about 900 grams in total. So here I am, I'm in my tarp tent configuration. As you can see, there's plenty of room. I can lay stretched out at the back here, and I think there's probably enough room to get another adult in here if necessary. But as a solo rider, I've got plenty of space here to lay out my kit, maybe do some cooking, make preparations for the next day's journey. The downside to this type of configuration is I don't have a ground sheet, so I don't have protection against the dampness, and nor do I have any kind of sleeping inner or bed chamber, so I have very little protection against insects. But otherwise, it's quite similar to the concept of the one Tigris tent, in that it's a pyramid or teepee construction. So in order to create this tarp tent, you're gonna need a central support. In this case, I've got an extendable walking stick, which weighs in at about 300 grams. If you don't wanna be carrying that on your bike, when you get to your location, you're gonna to have to find a stick or a pole to do the job. And the other thing about carrying this on the bike is it's quite long, and the only place I've found to stow it is along the crossbar. So one of the advantages of this tarp is it's extremely light in comparison. It's very versatile. I don't just have to stick to this shape. So if I'm in close terrain or I'm in a wood, I can use the trees to put a ridge line and make this into a different sort of shape. But of course, the tarp is never gonna provide you with the same sort of level of security or privacy that a tent does. So if you're gonna to go to a campsite location, then you're probably gonna want a tent. But if you're out in the wild or you're wild camping in a remote location, then the tarp can provide you with quite good shelter. So there you have it, my two bike packing tents and my tarp. Now the first consideration is location. If I'm off to a public campsite where I need more privacy and more security, then I'm gonna take a tent. If I'm in a remote location enjoying a wild camp, then I'm probably gonna take the tarp. The second factor was how long you're gonna go for. If you're going for more than a night, then a tent is probably a better option. It's gonna provide you with a more permanent sort of base camp. But if you're undertaking some kind of an event, like a long audax or a challenge event, where really the journey is more important than the stop, then the tarp is gonna provide you with a flexible, versatile shelter. The third factor is the time of year or season that you're planning to go away. That's because that's gonna have a large influence on the type of weather that you may encounter. If it's gonna be wet or windy, or if it's hot and humid and there's a lot of insects about, then you're probably gonna to need to take a tent with the protection of the inner sleeping chamber. But if you don't mind roughing it or you've got some sort of mosquito net, then the tarp might be adequate. If you're going away in the hot tent and you've got access to a stove, then the more the better. But the good thing about a tarp is that you can build it into a configuration in a wild camp location to take advantage of a campfire which might keep away the insects and provide you with additional warmth on those cold evenings. 
The fourth factor is the packing size and weight. Generally, a tent is going to be more bulky and heavier than the tarp. And whichever tent or tarp you take, you need to consider whereabouts you're going to stow it on your bike, whether or not it's going to be on the handlebars or in a saddle bag or in a frame bag. And the other thing that's worth bearing in mind is the length of the poles and whereabouts they'll fit on your bike. If they're particularly long, you might not be able to have that up on your front handlebar. and You may need to find another location on the frame to stow it. The fifth factor is versatility. Now a tent is a tent is a tent, but a tarp can be anything you want it to be, including a tarp tent if you want to make it into that configuration. In answer to the question, what's better, tarp or tent? The answer is neither. It all depends on where you're going and how long you're gonna go for and what's the purpose of your trip. So it's nice to have the different options available to you. So there you have it, tent or tarp, tarp or tent. It's entirely up to you. There's so many different factors that will play into your decision. If you've got any additional ideas on which one you prefer, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read those. And I hope this video has been useful for you. Thanks very much for watching.